Hello and welcome back to the bench. This is the third installment of my scientific glass blowing series. In today's video, we're going to cover how to cut glass, the different methods to use to cut glass, different tips and tricks, and then also how to fire that polish that glass when you are done. Now, glass comes in many different lengths, and in most cases, it's very long tubes that it comes in. Now, this is okay for some projects, but for 99.999% of your projects, you don't need a piece of glass this long. Like if you're trying to make a test tube, you're gonna to wanna to cut it down to a smaller size. Now, there's many different methods, and the first one I'll be showing is the file method. Now, for this, as the name implies, you're gonna be using a file. Now, any file will work, but it's recommended that you have a triangular file. This is nice because it gives you a nice pointed end and a place to rest your finger to apply pressure on the glass while you're cutting it. Let's start off with one long piece of glass. Now to do this, you place it just on the bench, take your file, you can either put your thumb or finger here, and just do a quick forward, and you make a score line. Then you're gonna wanna wet this line by using a paper towel, spit or saliva, and to wet the point. Now for the next part, you're going to rotate the glass to where the score is on the other side of you, and then place your thumbs here and pull back, and it'll snap. Now if you're a beginner or don't want to get glass everywhere, you can put gloves on in case you're scared of cutting your fingers, or you can do what I'll do and place a towel around it. Next place your thumbs with the crease in the center and pull forward and you get your glass broken. Now the first method that I showed is known as a bench break. So where you place on the bench and then use the file. The next one is more of a stronger glass blower cutter style, but it's more quick and efficient. It's where you cut it in your hand. For that, you can use a tungsten knife or a file. Tungsten knives work off of a material known as tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide is very, very, very sharp and stays sharp for a long time. Tungsten carbide is a very dense, hard material which is used in different, many, many different cutting materials. Now for this, we're just gonna be wearing a glove, putting our file, making a quick nick in the glass and getting our line there and wetting this line and then doing the same thing. You can break it like how you normally would, or you can put it into your palm of your hand and snap it like that. Now the first method that was shown was known as a bench brick. That same method can be applied, but if just wanna put the glass in your hand and score it in your hand and then break. This is a quicker, more efficient way for more experienced glass breakers and glass workers. Now this is more experienced and takes a bit more effort. You can use a file or you can use a tungsten knife, make a basic score, and then break it the way that you did previously. Now the third method that I'm going to be showing for breaking glass is by using the torch and heating up a piece of glass rod. Now this method works best for larger diameter cutting when you need to cut a large diameter tube that you don't have access to a bench cutter or a glass saw. Now the next method that I'll be showing is how to cut larger diameter tube or tubing that's already in place, such as the lines on here or the lines on here. Now this is using a method where you're gonna use the torch to heat up a section of tubing or rod in this case to glowing hot and place it on a line, which will then cause the glass to crack. To start this method, you're gonna be using your tube, like you normally do on the bench method, and your file. And you're gonna to wanna to make a cut. Now for this cut, you want it to extend farther both sides than what your rod would be touching it. Because if you do not do that, then your rod will expand larger and will cause it not to crack. You're gonna begin just by making a score. Now 
bottom there you have your score. You're going to want to wet that like you normally do. And now that you have your line cut and it's been wet, you're going to want to move on to the torch step. Now for this, you're just going to easily light the torch, get a nice flame glowing, and slowly add your rod to it. Now with glass, it's a great insulator, so the outside will melt, but the inside will stay solid. This will cause the glass to crack and explode. So you're going to want to add it nice and slowly while rotating the glass. And start at the top and pass it in and out of the flame, slowly warming it up. As you do it, you're going to want to move it closer to the working area of the torch. And you can see the sodium flares start to occur, which means the glass is starting to melt. Now you can slowly, slowly rotate it. Now we got a large bead forming and we don't really need that, so we can pull that off with the torch tip. and then we can apply this to the wet mark. And there we have our crack that has formed. Now if the crack does not extend all the way around, we can knock on it. Let's turn off the torch first and get our glass cutting knocker. And we see that it, we didn't even need to do it and it just broke. And there we have it, our nice cut. Now once again, this method is more reserved for if you want to cut specialty parts or doing repairs or if you're cutting a really large diameter tube. Okay, great. Now you have your glass cut, but it has this sharp, jagged edge on it. What to do now? Well, you do a process known as flame or fire polishing. With this, you just bring it into the torch and melt the glass around it, creating a nice smooth end. Now, fire polishing isn't reserved for just cleaning up tube that you're working on. It also can be used for different repairs. It's one of the more common repairs that you'll be making on things. Beakers are known as a consumable in the lab because they're relatively cheap and they break a lot. Now, if you get a crack on the bottom, it's not worth flame polishing it or you get a crack that runs down the lip of it, it's not worth flame polishing it, or a lot of cracks occur down at the bottom here. Not worth flame polishing it, because you really can't. You would have to weld the glass, and it's not worth your time or effort, someone else's time or effort. But in this case, there's a chip right at the top, which creates this sharp part here, this point of weakness. This can be easily flame polished, and then you have a fully functioning beaker again. Or if you have an Erlenmeyer flask, where you get a crack along the top too. That's easily flame polished and repaired. But once again, if you get a crack anywhere else that runs it, these are also consumable and it's not worth your time to repair. Now let's flame polish some tubing. Once again, light the torch and get a nice flame going. Now for flame polishing, you're going to want to slowly bring it into the flame and hold it at either an equal angle to the flame or lower. If you hold it at a high angle, there's a chance that the flame will travel down the tube and heat up the other end or cause a burn in your hand. And burns aren't really fun when you're messing around with a 4000 degree torch. Now we're going to bring it in and we're going to rotate it. As you see, how I'm rotating the glass is using these two fingers as my motor and then using these bottom fingers to hold the glass and spin it. Now we're going to bring it in and start heating it slowly at first until we get to the point where we start seeing the sodium flares and it starts melting. Once again, it's not as common with rod, as tubing as it is rods for it to break as soon as you go into it, but it is 
can occur. Now it really doesn't take much to flame polish and we're already done. Now a nice flame polish will leave the tube with the same diameter as you started with. This is once again hot, so you can just set that down off to the side to cool. But now you have a nice smooth, and in this case, a little test tube, even though the bottom isn't the best. And in the next video, I'll be covering how to do the bottoms of those. And there we have it. Two different necessary principles that you learned today fire polishing, flame polishing, whatever you want to call it, and glass cutting and different methods you can use. One method that I forgot about talking about is using a electronic tool such as a cutting disc, but that's more reserved if you're getting into more advanced larger tubes, and it's not really necessary for the small stuff that you start off doing. I also don't want you to be scared by seeing me using an oxypropane torch. A regular blowtorch will work, but just remember to use a map gas mix, which is these yellow tanks that you see at the stores and not the green ones. These burn a lot hotter than the regular green ones. And use a flame pencil tip. You can do a lot of the stuff that I've shown here with that. And that's how I started off. And I didn't have this full setup here. And these torches are relatively cheap, but I recommend starting a class off first before diving into and spending all the money, unless you score one for cheap, like I did. And time for the shameless plugs. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, you know what to do. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc., drop it in the comment section below, as I'm a small channel and I'm able to read absolutely all of them, and I will reply if I know what you're trying to get across. Check out the description for my different socials, and check out the description for my eBay store, which has a lot of different chemicals and products, and that's what I use to fund my channel. As always, I appreciate all of you, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. So, my cad, I bought me a Jeep. I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.